Okay, hello everyone. Uh, just to, going to give you a quick walkthrough of the Python-based autopilot that I put together. Over on the left-hand side here, we see the X-Plane 10 flight simulator. On the right-hand side, we see the Python-based uh, graphical interface. And just to show you some of the quick, quickly some of the sections within here, we see on the middle left-hand side, uh, this is the status data of the user versus autopilot command and input. So I'll, I'll do a quote-unquote stir the pot sweep right here of the pitch and the roll axis. This is me moving the joystick to causing that red arrow to move. So any, any of the red markers that you see on that screen are the user control input. This is the, the rudder or the yaw axis. And also here is throttle up, throttle down. In green, that shows the current autopilot command, um, as, as as indicated on the screen there. In the middle top section, we see the autopilot control. This allows me to specify the higher level modes, such as altitude, vertical speed, or airspeed hold, as well as to individually enable the control axes for elevator, throttle, aileron, and rudder. These data feed into the inner loop control which manage the specific orientation and airspeed in order to meet the higher level modes specified by the outer loop. So on the longitudinal status here, we can see the commanded value, which comes from outer loop. And we also see the current value that it's trying to regulate. So this is the airspeed, vertical speed, pitch rate, pitch angle, and height. And lastly, over on the right-hand side, this is the individual status data that comes off of the X-Plane 10 flight simulator, just for a bit more detailed enunciation and debugging. So to get us started, what I'll do is I'll type in a, an altitude pre-select of 5,000 feet. I'll also enter in a rather slow climb up of 1,000 feet per minute, and I'll change that later on. And we'll also set the airspeed to the 180 knots. And I'm also going to start recording data here too, so we can look at it in post-processing. So, we've got all the preconditions set pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and throttle up. Let's see, the engine speed is picked up here. Airspeed's obviously currently zero. Altitude's about 400 feet, so, or on, on the tarmac here. So I'm going to go ahead and release the parking brake and start our takeoff acceleration roll. So that is 150 knots indicated, and we're currently at 800 feet MSL. I'm going to enable the auto throttle and vertical speed control. Let go of the joystick. So it's going to descend there to pick up airspeed. It's going to then capture the airspeed, which it just did. And I'm, I'm hand managing the roll axis here, so to make sure we keep the wings level while we fly this. So that is 181 knots, and currently at about. 1360 feet, it looks like. Now if we look at the inner loop status here, we see a commanded 180 knots, as specified up here. Commanded vertical speed of 1,000 feet per minute. Currently what it's tracking is a 182 knot currently indicated airspeed, and the current vertical speed is 800, 850 or so. But this is also tracking the, the climb out altitude here. This is, this is basically started off at the initial altitude where we began, and then this Python program is gradually adding to this altitude so that we track it upwards. So we're at about 2,000 feet MSL. I'm going to go ahead and dial the vertical speed up since we've, we've pretty well established this, this climb out condition. I'm going to change a factor here so it's going to increase the airspeed while holding that same vertical speed. This just demonstrates that we're tracking multiple quantities at once by steering both the throttle and the elevator axis. So I'm going to hit the auto throttle and vertical speed again. And over here, you can see that the 
airspeed is climbing, is steadily increasing to 220, but we're still tracking the same climb out altitude profile. So there we got 224, so we overshot by about four knots. Let's get it back that back down. It stabilized probably about 222 or so. And it seems like it's established it pretty well. We're still at about 2700. We've simply increased our airspeed to about 220 ballpark. So now what I'll do is I'll increase the vertical speed to 2000 feet per minute while still holding that 220 knots airspeed. So hit the auto throttle vertical speed button again. There you go. If you watch the status data here, it's got a little bit of oscillatory behavior, but it is steadily climbing up to about yeah, 2,000 while still holding that 220 vertical speed. of this aircraft in, in cruise condition, which was performed by providing a sweep of each of the different control axes um, on the on frequency basis. So we roll left, roll right, roll left, roll right with increasing frequency in order to get the frequency response of the output variables with respect to the control axes. And that method was uh, it's a published method by um, Tischler that provided this, this, this response. So here we can see that we're coming in at about 4,900 feet. So the, the outer loop control is gradually backing down the vertical speed rates that we dial in and perfectly intercept the, the cruising altitude. So we're at shot by about 20 feet. Airspeed's currently at 221, so it's one knot high. There we've reached our cruise condition. So now if I want to, now that I'm established and stabilized on this, I can back my airspeed down to, we'll say, 180. This time I'm going to hit the altitude hold button, since we're at our, our, our final altitude. We saw the, the nose pitch down ever so slightly as a result of pulling the throttle back. Airspeed dipped down to about 20 feet low, but it's picking it back up and recovering. You see the airspeed, or sorry, the altitude drop down. Airspeed pulled down to 185, 184, 183. That's becoming stable, and you can see the throttle coming back in to capture that airspeed. There we go, we're at 180 knots. And to demonstrate a descent profile, let's drop at 1,000 feet per minute down to 4,000 feet. And do auto throttle vertical speed. Here we'll descend down. Well, we're at a good turn to the right here just a little bit. Here we are holding constant vertical speed, constant airspeed in a descent while turning as well. So that's 4,600, 4,500. Steadily dropping down. Again, during this descent, I can also change my descent criteria. If I want to speed it up, I can do this.
remember all, all, all the time while I'm doing this, I've had it, this recording data, so it's dumping out to a, a comma separated file. So once this stabilizes, let me go ahead and stop this. Yeah, that's 4,000 feet, still holding the specified 180 knots. There, we've reached a pretty stable cruise condition. I'm going to stop recording. saved. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run another program here which is going to parse that recorded data. Let's review that. So as I mentioned earlier, this forms a linearized model of the aircraft by stimulating each of the control axes. And then what we did is designed a controller which then monitors the airspeed, the vertical speed, the pitch rate, uh, the pitch angle, and the height in order to regulate the elevator and the throttle so that the air aircraft maintains each of those five quantities that I specified. So here you see that my parser program has gone through. I've taken this 16 meg CSV file that we just produced as part of this test, and that auto-generates a PDF of the profile that we did during the, the climb out and the brief descent. So here we can see the initial point during this region here where I was hand flying it. So this took us up to approximately about 150 knots, as I had mentioned. I then enabled autopilot to capture an airspeed of 180 knots as part of the 1,000 feet per minute climb out. So here we can see holding that 180 knots, and then if you remember, I instructed it to accelerate to 220 knots. So you can see the performance in red here, where it then accelerated up to 220, then held that airspeed within, as we saw, about two or three knots. <coughs> then we maintained a nice steady climb at that airspeed for a bit. So if I jump down here to the height profile, this is again this when I enabled the autopilot. We held that 1,000 feet per minute climb up to here until I accelerated it to 2,000 feet per minute. And then this is the point where it began to level off to go to 5,000. And then this is where I commanded the nice steady decline of 1,000 feet per minute down to the 4,000 feet. This point right here is where I increased the descent profile, and that's where it captured it at the end of the recording. So as we look through, we can see the, the individual response axes. So this is vertical speed, where it's basically holding that constant vertical speed while maintaining the airspeed. So it's tracking five quantities by controlling two. So there's going to be a little bit of oscillation in there, but it tries to manage each of those. This is pitch angle rate, Q and also pitch angle theta. And at the end of this, this is the control signals that are generated. So this is how, how it's managing throttle to maintain vertical speed and airspeed. And this is the, in blue here, we see the elevator command, which is contr directly controlling pitch rate. So. <coughs> So in conclusion here, we've demonstrated that the Python autopilot is capable of managing individual airspeed and vertical speed control while regulating the pitch rate, the pitch angle, and a couple of the other variables that are ancillary to this. And we've demonstrated that it has pretty reasonable accuracy in holding both airspeed and altitude.